Hey guys, this is Mike from N3K, and if you're watching this video, you're probably attending a game jam quite soon, whether it is a physical one or one online, say, on itch.io. Or you're a loyal subscriber, and if that's the case, thank you for tuning in again. And uh, yes, we are alive, and yes, we're doing fine. Okay, cool. So we have recently joined a game jam that is called the Pixel Challenge. It is one of the biggest game jam here in Quebec City, and it is a physical game jam. Basically, you have 48 hours to complete a game, from scratch as always and then you are being judged by three guys or three girls or a mix of both and uh, the winner wins $5,000 Canadian. After attending this game jam four times now, that's the fourth year I competed at game jam and also doing some other game jam online, I'm going to share with you guys five tips that is going to help you win a game jam or just be a little bit more prepared. Number one, do not rush to start. That is really important. When the team is announced, you'll start seeing other people rush to their station and start working. It's really important that you don't start until the whole team is ready and the whole idea is settled. And we've been seeing that over and over again, um, uh, Pixel Challenge, every single year I've been, there's always one team that start over again after say 10 hours or 20 hours in the challenge. They decide to scrap their first idea because it was not solid enough they did not take enough time basically to think about it and they scrap and redo something from scratch. So it's really important that you guys settle in on the idea you want to do and that you actually have something solid. To make sure everybody's on the same page, what you could have is everybody in the team draw a quick concept, um, stick figure, something really, really simple of what they think the game could be uh, in their head. So everybody sees what other people sees on a simple piece of paper. And speaking from past experience, it is really important you do that and you show which kind of perspective you're going to bring the game to. Maybe give a little bit of insight on what the UI is going to be and also how you're going to be interacting with that UI. And that's really important because if you're settling down to make something, say that is a 2D side scroller in your head, and your artist is making a top down uh, in 2D as well, then you're both going in, in different directions. So uh, make sure everybody's on the same page before you get started. And of course, with the programmers in your team, when everybody else is done, you've did the design, it works fine, settle down with only your programmer and if you're by yourself, you know, take the time to lay down a decent code architecture that you'll be able to follow throughout the project uh, and maybe make it a little bit flexible to add more stuff later on if you need to, but definitely uh, have something that's set in stone and that's going to be easy to share code in between one or multiple parties. Okay, number two. Audio matters, don't leave your sound guy behind. The sound is gonna be a big part of your game and you wanna be integrating that person or whoever makes the sound, you wanna be putting him in the team and also letting him know what kind of feeling you're trying to reach, what kind of ambience you're trying to have inside of the game. If you can, send him a build of the game as soon as possible so he can put his hand on it, see where he needs to put some sound effects, where he needs to put more work in because that action happens more often so he's able to do his priority uh, properly. And also, if he needs some uh, technical work to be done such as integrating this audio engine in your project, then of course help him as soon as possible. This way he can actually test out his stuff and be able to work on the same level and same speed as you guys are working. Number three is the judging context. So this one is really just for physical game jam, but it's also worth thinking about if you have a game jam that's online or you're making game jam with other people over the internet. So let's actually talk about that so basically this means put yourself in the shoes of the judges while they judge your game now of course you could be going to a game jam just to have fun that's totally fine and if that's your your goal then uh good on you but if you're trying to win if you're trying to actually try to get out there and like strike the judges you're going to have to put yourself in their shoes as they are experiencing the game so just to give you an example at the pixel challenge there is about 400 500 people in the same room it's a big venue but they're still in the same room it's really noisy, it's really chaotic, people smell, they haven't been cleaning themselves for like 48 hours or something like that, and so it's a really weird environment to judge something in. It's not the most, you're not sitting in your couch at home, you're not enjoying um, soundproof all around you. So think about that. It might be noisy, it might be smelly, it might be distracting, and all of that is going to affect the judge's experience. Now if something has to be explained to the judges while they're playing your game, well first, that's a big red flag, but if it has to happen, make sure that you have the most charismatic person in the team speak to the judge while they're playing, just to give them a feeling of, of uh, warmth and a feeling of, I don't know how to explain that properly, make them feel at ease is what I'm gonna say. 
If you have some noise cancelling earphones, definitely bring them, make sure they're clean, make sure they're shiny, and please don't, don't bring the earbuds, that don't bring the earbuds, nobody wants to put that in their ears, so yeah, think, think about having a, uh, some, some noise cancelling earphones. Next! Now the fourth one is to make your game intuitive, and I know that's what people tell you all the time if you're attending a game job, make your game easy to understand, make your game fast, fun, and all that kind of stuff, but... Um, I briefly mentioned it in the last point, if you have to explain your game to the judges, that's a red flag already, you're probably already lost, and if you're online, they probably already close your game or close the tab and move on to another project. Having the judge read multiple lines of paragraph before they just understand how to play your game and then they still have to map that to a controller, that's, that's gonna eat too much time and that's time that they're not going to be putting on playing your game, so of course you wanna make it as intuitive as possible. Now it's easy to say, and uh, I'm the first one to make the mistake of just telling someone, hey, make it easy to understand. So I came up with a little list before we jump into the, the pixel challenge and I'm going to share that with you now. So let's go. So these work extremely well in our context, which was a physical game jam with a five minute judging round. Of course, adapt that to your situation. First off, we have the don't. Don't have a complex input scheme. Two button is enough. One directional stick, maybe two button. You don't want to have to teach the judge how to play your game and what button does what. You want to have something that's really simple. They can just pick up the controller and play basically and understand the input schemes without you know having five or six different buttons to learn. Next up we have more than two mechanics. So um, I typed that over here but I'm really gonna be saying if you have one mechanic that's enough. If you're going for two mechanic that's already some some more time that the judges have to spend and learn that additional mechanic. Remember, you don't want to have a progression curve in a game jam. They don't have the time to go through that progression curve, even though it's something really required for a normal game that you experience by yourself on the couch, whatever, if you want to have a good experience, progression curve is there. It has retention and all, but you're in a game jam, so they don't have that time to spend on your game. Uh, so definitely don't have more than one mechanic, I would say. Next up we have the uncontrolled random, and I'm just gonna say random overall, having a random element in your game. For someone that tries and, and understand your game in the really short term, having random element is going to disrupt a certain pattern that the judges will be trying to create in their head on how to play your game. So they're always trying to figure out how to play your game and having a random element will disrupt that, will make it even harder to understand faster and will make it harder to pick up. So random is a no-go and then finally, <laughs> Finally, we have dynamic camera, and let me explain to you guys. Myself and the people younger than me, maybe we've been we've been born in video game. We know how to play video game, um, intuitive video game, 3D games such as Assassin's Creed, where you move around with one joystick, you move the camera with the other joystick. But that's not the case for everybody. You're gonna be seeing a lot of people struggle with just moving around in a 3D environment. That's something that's hard to compute for them. Maybe you have some of the judge that are not really gamer, but they are mobile gamer they play games on their phone and that's a real market that's 62 percent of the market actually from what i recall the last that I, I looked at don't quote me on this by the way but still it's a big part and they might be used to playing mobile games so having a complex movement scheme with a camera and dynamic camera it might not be something that they'll be able to understand as fast and what's going to end up happening is that they'll be stuck in the in the corner of your game for the whole duration of the playtest and that's just going to suck, man. So definitely have no dynamic camera in, in, in that. All right, so next up we have things to consider. Consider adding this to your game, depending, of course, on your whole game gen environment. If it's physical, if it's online, you're going to have to adapt uh, accordingly. Use your brain and common sense. That's pretty good. So number one is having co-op, making judges work together. That's always super cool when they speak to each other and they play with each other on the same screen just like as in a couch gaming session. Now of course, this is not something possible online and if you're going to attempt that online, uh, good luck. First, you need to do multiplayer and second, you need to make sure that they're not gonna be lazy enough to not even try and connect themselves. Basically, it's gonna be way too hard if you do it online, don't. Um, but for physical game jam though, this is always a key. They love playing with each other, they love playing against each other as well, so co-op is definitely something to consider. Next up is something fast-paced. Of course, you want to be creating an experience that they will remember after playing. So if you stress them out without really scaring them or without telling them that they're bad by, I don't know, killing them in the game or something, if you stress them out and you give them like a safe environment to work in, they will have this little spike and they will remember these moments. So having something fast-paced 
is always a big win in a game jam. Next is to make something relatable. So making something relatable is so they can also remember your game, but in a different manner. You can remember the game because you're a little bit stressed out about it, because you had a good time, or you can remember the game by connecting it to something else that's more personal or more of like an experience. In our case, the Pixel Challenge, we create a game around the Three Little Pigs story. It's an old story that we've been told when we were young, um, but when the judges saw that, they arrived and they giggled a bit, so they connected that. So at the end of the day, they remember that there was a game about the Three Little Pigs story. That's always something good, and if the judges can remember you, then you, you win some point, right? And finally, there is a, a line over here that says add particle. Now, I'm not quite sure why this is still in there, but uh, you might, might consider adding particles. They're, they're shiny and stuff, so... Yeah, okay, next we have have fun. No, I'm just kidding, actually, be realistic. So, you gotta be really realistic when you join a game jam. If it's a 48-hour game jam, make sure you take a nap. Make sure you sleep in between. If it's a 24-hour game jam, do remember that the first 10 hours is gonna be fine, you're gonna be super productive, but then after that, your concentration is going to decrease over time and more and more. So, be, <laughs> be realistic when you scope your game. Tell yourself that, okay, if I only have 24 hours to create this game, Let's make something that's doable in 12 or 15 because you're not going to be fully there for a 24 hour. And if you are, you're probably not going to be as efficient as in the beginning, that's for sure. So really scope something that you can achieve. And if you have a multi-day game jam, just sleep. Sleeping is great. Anyway, it's going to help you recover and be really more effective the day after. And I'm going to end on a final note here. So the biggest regret I see people having when they exit game jam whether it's online or it's physical, is the lack of completion. They didn't complete their game, they did not complete the challenge, they did not finish the game, or maybe like nobody had the chance to play it. So it's really important that you are realistic with your goals, you are realistic with your scope, you do something that you can achieve so you don't end up in that really bad state at the end where, hey, we spent this whole time working on something and we didn't push anything, we didn't come at anything, nobody played our game. So that's always a shame. Uh, make sure you complete your game, be realistic, and do you have anything to add? Have a post-mortem once you're done. Talk to your team and realize what went wrong and also what could be better for the next one. That's, uh, that's a tip for after the game jam, once you win or you failed. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any more tips, please let us know in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear your tips, that was my 5 tips, but I bet that you have some good ones as well, especially if you've done a lot of online game jam, I know a lot of people here are really just about that, so definitely check down the, uh, check down. Look at the comment section down below, we will be pinning the best messages, and also, um, you guys have a great day. Should attend some physical game jam, they're quite cool, you meet, you meet a lot of great people there. And uh, you just go there with your friends, you don't sleep. Drink too much coffee. What else? You get an art block because there's so many people and you see what they're all about. Something like that.